Sometimes reward yourself, but occasionally delete the reward. It's very important to experience a win at some point. But one thing that a lot of people um, misperceive is that we should always celebrate our wins. The dopamine system is very good at predicting wins. And when it can predict a win, if those wins come on a regular basis, you start reducing the amount of dopamine that's released in response to those wins. It seems a little counterintuitive, but the casino owners understand this. The pattern of reinforcement that works best in animals and humans is intermittent random reinforcement. So one thing that you can do, and I suggest to people, is that if you are working hard at something or you're really pushing yourself, sometimes reward yourself, but occasionally delete the reward because it sets up, there's a, something called dopamine reward prediction error. Again, we probably don't have time to get into all the, it's, it's a computational uh, analysis of what keeps things, uh, people and animals motivated to continue to pursue. And random re uh, intermittent reinforcement is the optimal schedule. Have you done an episode on that? Uh, somewhat. I did an episode on dopamine, sort of a dopamine masterclass. We got into it, but I haven't really boiled it down to a specific protocol, but it would look something like this. You're in your 90 minute learning bout or work bout of any kind. You're doing your little gap learning things. And every once in a while, you look at the clock and go, oh, I've made it 30 minutes without looking at my phone. You think, okay, that feels pretty good. Other times um, you might uh, say, you know, okay, I made it to the 45 minute mark. I'm gonna go get myself a nice cup of coffee. So you have a little bit of coffee. Other times you delete the coffee and you keep working. What you're doing is you're effectively taking that goal line and you're moving, you're catching little micro wins. It's sort of like a video game where you pick up little coins. I'm an old school guy. I don't play video games, but the ones I did play, like you pick up coins and you like give you power. Like Pac-Man or there was like the Super Mario yeah, Brothers. Yeah. I'm, I'm truly old and, and out of it in respect to this, so forgive me. But what you're doing is you're picking up additional lives or points, but occasionally you don't take anything. It keeps you in pursuit. Keep it guessing. Keep it guessing. Let's say another way to do this is uh, I, I suggest people avoid layering dopamine. You know, you have one dopamine system that fortunately can be activated by a lot of different things. So for instance, I love the feeling of being completely rested, going into the gym or going for a run mid-morning after a cup of coffee, hydrating well, using the bathroom, listening to my favorite music on a sunny day. But that's a lot of things layering in for dopamine. And what happens is that if that becomes your hope and expectation, fine. But if that becomes your requirement for actually having a great run or workout, you're in trouble because the next time you're, it's not gonna be that exciting and you're not gonna be that motivated. You actually won't perform as well. So this year, what I've been doing is every third or fourth workout or so, I think kind of randomly, I leave my phone in the car, I don't use any music, and I don't allow myself any kind of pre-workout stimulant. So I have to generate all the force and energy and everything I'm gonna do from internal processes. And you might say, well, that's kind of masochistic. Why would you do that? It's supposed to be fun. Well, I'll tell you, when the next time when you bring your headphones and you're listening to music, you feel like a god in there. What the re Why? Because you are, secreting so much more dopamine, so much more noradrenaline, so much more effective at performance. But then the next time you have to throttle it back.